Hey guys, it is Sebastian from Ask Zebby, and today we are going to talk about the card of the month for September of 2019. This is going to be a really good bonus if you are someone who wants to do an aspirational flight, so business or first class. The card we're talking about today is going to be the Virgin Atlantic card by Bank of America. We'll talk about the intro bonus, how it compares to the prior ones, as well as how you might want to optimally use those points. We'll also talk about pretty much every other feature of the card that you need to know about, but we'll focus on the key things. Before we dive into it, feel free to give this video a thumbs up, lets me know that you like stuff like this, and it really helps me with the YouTube algorithm since it hasn't been too big of a fan. Also, if you're not subscribed, feel free to do that. I feel like most people watching, though, are probably subscribed. For the bonuses, I'm going to focus on what the real intro bonus is rather than what the marketing one is, just because for some of the marketing, it's not really as authentic as I would like. The big reason is because it might say 80,000 points, but 15,000 of those points is kind of related to very heavy spend in the long term rather than something as part of what we expect to be an intro bonus. So in case you're wondering why there's some discrepancy, that's the main reason. So the real intro bonus we're seeing is 60,000 points after $2,000 of minimum spend within the first three months. You're also going to get an authorized user bonus of 5,000 points. You're going to earn 3x points back on purchases directly of Virgin Atlantic and 1.5x back everywhere else. The card has a $90 annual fee and there's no foreign transaction fees. The prior offer that we saw was 70,000 points after $12,000 of minimum spend with a 5,000 authorized user bonus. So technically there has been an offer that is higher than the current one, but it's not really as competitive. $2,000 of spend versus $12,000. Even if I have high spend, I'd probably still take the $2,000 offer because it makes more sense. You're better off using your additional spend hitting two, three, four other credit card welcome bonuses. If you go on their website today, you're going to see an offer of 30,000 points after $1,000 of minimum spend with a 5,000 authorized user bonus. The 65,000 point offer that we're talking about is the one that is on our site, so when you use the links that are on there. So in this case, it's a higher offer and also it supports the channel. If we value the points at two cents per point, 60,000 points is $1,200 in value. The authorized user bonus of 5,000 points is going to be worth $100 in value. So in total, you're getting 65,000 points worth about $1,300 in value for $2,000 of minimum spend, representing a 65% return on your spend. The two cents per point number is going to be based off aspirational stuff. If you want to do economy, you probably want to value it at about 1.1 to 1.3 cents per point, depending on where you're flying from. We'll talk about that use case, but just something for you to be aware of. The best use case for these points is going to be for Air Nippon New, ANA, business or first. For business, you're spending 90,000 points to fly from the West Coast to Japan round trip. If you're flying from the East Coast, it's going to be 95,000 points. For first, it's 110,000 points from the West Coast and 120,000 points from the East Coast. Retail prices for these are going to be pretty crazy, so let's look at the one for business class. And now let's look at the one for first class. You might be wondering why we're only using a two cents per point valuation when technically it's something closer to 10 cents per point. I don't really think the 10 cents per point figure is fair. Two cents per point represents what most people are willing to pay for an experience like this. And for someone about that YOLO life though, if for someone who wants to just do really cool stuff, then maybe it is that 10 cents per point figure, which is fine, but just something for you to be aware of. That's kind of how I use these figures. It just doesn't really feel fair to say that a welcome bonus is worth $20,000. If you're in the Chase or American Express ecosystem, let's say you have the Chase Sapphire Preferred, transfer 30,000 points over in order to get enough points for the redemption. So about three cards worth of intro bonuses for a pretty cool experience. Another really good use case for these points is going to be for Delta One Suites. If you want to fly from the US to Europe, it's going to be 100,000 points round trip. For Asia, it's going to be 120,000 points round trip. Flying to Australia, it's 150,000 points round trip. Depending on where you're looking to fly, there might be different airports that you actually need to reposition to to make it work. So for Europe, you need to fly to Detroit. With Asia, you have a lot more options. So Atlanta, LAX, Seattle, Minneapolis, as well as Detroit. And then for Sydney, 
it's only through LA. The main reason is because different routes have different products, and if you're going to drop the points anyways, you might as well fly Delta One Suites. One thing to be aware of here is that with ANA, when you book, it has to be round trip. For Delta One Suites, it could actually just be one way. So if you want to try a different product on the way back, or if you don't have enough points, that might be a better solution. If you're someone who's excited about this card and you want to learn more about it, a very easy way to support our channel would be to use the links that are on our website, asksebi.com, or the ones down below in the description box. For a lot of people, that's pretty much all you need to know about. It's a really good bonus that is better than the historic offer, in my opinion, and then you're getting pretty good return on spend and how to use those points. For the rest of the video, we're going to talk about some other use cases of the points and also some of the other benefits. Starting off with other benefits, you're going to get additional points if you spend a lot more money with them. So there's two levels to this. You're going to get 7,500 points if you spend $15,000 on the card, and then you get an additional 7,500 points after you spend an additional $10,000 on the card. So effectively 15,000 points for $25,000 of spend. In the marketing, when they say 80,000 points, the 15,000 points that we're missing from the 65 number we're using is from this. Even at a two cents per point valuation, the return on spend here is relatively small at 1.2%. There's also status related benefits that you can get if you are someone who spends a lot on the card. This one also doesn't really make sense to me because the status you get at most isn't really that useful. If you look at the benefits, it's fine, but it really pales in comparison with the status that we get in the US. Unless you're someone who flies Virgin Atlantic a lot, you have better options out there. Even at that top level status, I don't really think it's that interesting, but your mileage may vary as always. The final thing too, if you are going for this, is going to be the companion reward certificate that you get after spending $25,000 in a card member year. It's going to be the same class of service that you book into, so the optimal strategy to maximize that value is going to be business or first, depending on the airline you're flying. The big problem though is that doing some research, it looks like it only applies for Virgin Atlantic Metal. This means that you cannot use it for the A and A flights or the Delta flights that we've talked about. On the surface, that sounds fine. Why would you not be happy about this? The big problem is redeeming these points towards Virgin Atlantic doesn't really make any sense at all. If you want to do their upper class product between the US and the UK, it's going to cost you between 95,000 miles and 135,000 miles. The big problem is that in order to do this, you're also paying $1,100 to $1,200 in fees. So not only are you dropping a ton of points, you're also dropping something like $1,200 just to do this flight. And to me, that doesn't really make any sense. Some people will probably still happily do this, but I feel like there's other products you can do. There's other things you can do to make it a lot more reasonable. Even for economy, you run into the same problem. We're talking about $500 in fees for economy. For that number, you could easily buy an economy ticket without having to spend any points, and if anything, it's going to be a bit cheaper. Looking at a random one from Boston, it's about 300 something dollars, and I feel like I've seen rates between 250 and easily 500, so at the worst case, you're still not spending points you don't need to spend. One of the other questions I've gotten a lot is whether points are good for economy. I'll run through both A and A as well as Delta. I think it's fine. It really just depends on the specific cost. But if you're someone who wants to maximize the number of trips they're taking, this might be the better option. With A and A round trip, you're looking at 60,000 and 65,000 points round trip, respectively from East and West Coast. If you're flying from somewhere like Boston, it's about 750 to 800 dollars, depending on season and depending on deals. You're looking at 1.2 cents per point which is about 35 to about 40% return on your spend. I'm giving a lot of ranges here because it really just depends on whether there's any deals, but I think it is fine if you don't want to drop as many points. The big thing to me though is, would I rather spend 60,000 points for economy or spend an additional 30,000 points to make it business class, to make it something that is very memorable that I wouldn't otherwise do? If for someone on the fence, I'd recommend just trying it once, 30,000 points isn't too much to drop from Chase or American Express, and maybe you do it and you realize that, hey, it's not worth it to me, I don't care. At least you get it out of your system and you know that it's not something for you. For Delta, you're looking at 60,000 points round trip for economy to Europe and 80,000 points round trip for Asia. And again, these are going to be halved if you do one way because you don't need to do round trip, so 30,000 points and 40,000 points respectively. 
A and A to me at least makes a bit of sense. I think Delta doesn't really make sense just because if you want to fly Delta, there's been so many Delta deals for their credit cards and the fact that you can get one to 1.2 cents per point for Delta anyways, it just makes sense to go for Delta cards unless you have no other options if you've gone through all of them, especially waiting for those flash sales that seem to come every week or so. If you want to learn more about these cards and you want to support our channel, we have links that are down below in the description box as well as on our website, Ask Sebi. At the end of the day, it's about figuring out what you want to do with your points. For some people, it's going to be maximizing the number of trips. For other people, it's going to be doing things that they would never otherwise do. Could I pay $20,000 for a flight? Yes, technically, but that would be a very stupid move to me because I'm not getting that value back. I'd rather invest that and do something else with it or wait for a deal when it's $1,500 or $2,000. But using points, it's something that I can actually reasonably do and I'm not too afraid of doing. Maybe it's the fact that I grew up in a pretty normal household where I would never have thought that I could be flying business in first. Hopefully that was helpful. And my question for you guys is if you are going for this deal, how are you looking to use those points? Maybe it's Delta to Hawaii. Maybe it's flying to Japan. Let me and the community know down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps us out. If you know anyone else who would benefit from what we just talked about, feel free to share the video with them. It'll probably help them out. But otherwise, hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time.